The North American circuit has a touch of disorganized chaos. Teams like Anu Esports have won multiple scouting ground circuits and now sport multiple rosters this year, usually relying heavily on X Academy or X LCS players. Solify just entered the scene with Knock Academy team, allegedly offering salaries impressive <coughs> enough for some of these players to turn down Academy offers. You also have the entrance of LCS organizations with all of their resources like 100 Thieves, Cloud9, and Evil Geniuses. But on the other end of the spectrum, you have groups of friends who are hanging out after class and want to enter a tourney. They put together a really cute logo and a name like Super Sunshine Fruit Basket Warriors and give it a go. This mix of different organizations with different backgrounds and different means sets up perfectly for Risen Champions League's Swiss format. 16 amateur teams in Risen's Champions League play in a single group, but scheduling in the Swiss format progresses with teams playing six rounds of best of three. At the end, teams with 5-0 or 4-1 records will qualify for playoffs. But what exactly is the Swiss format? As rounds escalate, winners face winners and losers play losers. So in round two, a team that won round one can only be matched against another team that won round one. So far, two rounds have already been played. At the conclusion of these best of three rounds, eight teams remain undefeated. Evil Genius's Prodigies is obviously one of them, and right now looks kind of like the best team in Risen. But if you were expecting Cloud9 Amateur and 100 Thieves Next to have joined those undefeated teams, you'll be slightly disappointed. Instead, we have some of the typical expected characters. Anu has two teams in the top 8, Solified, one of the teams we already mentioned, has a spot in the standings, as well as a team called Barrage with familiar faces that some Academy fans will recognize like Fnatic and Gorica. But there are also three teams that, unless you're a diehard amateur fan, you likely haven't heard of. And the fun of watching amateur is always in rooting for the underdogs. Going by alphabetical order, first up is Mirage Esports. Mirage is a team from Quebec that has placed relatively high in SGC events before, and placed third, fourth in the Challengers Uprising New Year's Showdown in January, losing to Cloud9 Amateur. So far in Risen, Mirage's opponents have been based at college, with a top laner LCS fans may recognize called Quas, who they 2 0 handily, and another being the aforementioned Super Sunshine Fruit Basket Warriors. Yeah. While that may not initially impress you, it may surprise you to hear that when they played their first matches in Risen, they hadn't even scrimmed with their new jungler Hunter yet. Play Emotional, a relatively talented player, had already parted ways with the team, and they found a fast replacement. The way Mirage played Risen ended up being quite a bit different to how they played the New Year Showdown, but since I have no public VODs of the former, you won't see it here. What is retained is Mirage's predilection for dragon fights, often rotating to stack dragons when it isn't always optimal. Almost every amateur team is playing through bot right now, but Mirage love front to back and having all melee cops come into them. Not too surprising when their top laner Dragoon is a pretty well-known Darius main. He's been able to pick his signature champion in a few games where he's demonstrated he really understands the limits and how to min-max in his matchups. While well, ADK Meech is about to get a lot of attention in amateur rankings list, and it isn't really underserved, from games I've seen, Mirage have done better with a top lane advantage. They don't play super well around top, they don't really give up dragons for top lane advantage or anything like that, but Dragoon's leads have given them more reliable pivot points and consistent trigger pull. Uh, not just with Darius, I've also seen them succeed with Silas in the Risen matches. That said, who can say how well they'll do without their dragons, and there's a lot more tape left to see of them with Hunter as well. The next team on the list is Revival, another relatively known North American amateur organization. Their wins have come off an another amateur team called Team Clarity and the notorious 100 Thieves Next. Players a few of you might recognize from Revival include Sudzi, a mid laner who qualified for Scouting Grounds in 2019 but wasn't able to attend, and Plux, a support who did play in the 2020 Scouting Grounds on Team Mountain. There isn't a particular player I'd highlight on Revival, but they dropped a lot of Engage, and none of their players are seemingly afraid to use it. If at first you don't succeed, you just keep pulling that trigger. I personally really like this mentality. A lot of coaches will say these Engages aren't real, and they, they aren't, but amateur is where you kind of learn to use your judgment better. Pluck seems to really hate it, for example, when his thresh hook is on cooldown. He uses it almost cons constantly whenever it is up. Sudzi loves those TP angles, 
And I've actually surprisingly liked watching Concept of X, a player that I haven't really seen much of before, run at everyone on the map. Revival also have Sabrina the Jungle, and then Kha'Zix main. And while I usually have seen amateur teams just try to permanently dive bot or play for dragons, I've actually seen Revival play for Sibir's advantage and trade for bot plays. Their willingness to just brawl it out and to try to actually get a lead in their jungle matchup makes Revival pretty fun to root for. And finally, you have maybe my personal favorite on the list, Wildcard Gaming. WCG are another pretty established NA amateur organization like Mirage and Revival. What makes Wildcard unique on this list, however, is that in Risen's Teams to Watch list, they f that featured 10 teams in the tournament, both Mirage and Revival were mentioned, but Wildcard was left off. WCG so far have defeated Peak Performance Y and Sign Us Please, again, not really the most impressive opponents, but they've had the most decisive victories in the group. Praise is being given to bot laners like Luke and Daption because this team loves to dive. A lot. They know how to set up a volatile bot with all-ins and stack waves to make it happen, but sometimes they keep going a little too hard. Better opponents probably won't give them these trades in the first place, but the willingness to identify that yes, this screw-up is game-winning play makes WCG stand out. Other than just a hard snowballing bottom lane, WCG have had some of the most creative level 1s, including one where they had sup invade their red, waited, and traded for enemy blue on the same side. Again, there's no public bot of the series, so I'm only describing it. Even with all the praise for the bot lane, again, you're probably sensing a theme in amateur here, I found myself surprisingly impressed by Zeno. He's mostly played Syndra, but has shown solid movement, and has a history of champions like Yasuo in his collegiate days. He played Yon in a composition that should kill Yon and make his life really unbearable, but still found ways into fights. If I had to put actual money down, I'd probably be forced to tell you that I don't expect these teams to be 3-0 by the end of the next round. WCG will play Solified and Mirage will clash against the news main team, but these are the David and Goliath stories that make everyone watch Amateur, or at least make me think everyone should watch Amateur. If you're looking for underdogs to root for or just a fun time, look out for these teams, Mirage, Revival, and Wildcard Gaming. Thank you guys for watching. As always, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you check the description below, you'll notice that I am trying to compile a VOD database of all tier 2 tournaments, since a lot of the games are streamed on a bunch of different team channels. If you are a team in this space and you're watching this, please do me and yourselves a favor by streaming your games, even if you don't have casters and you just have some chill free source music in the background. It'll probably help. If you want to go the extra mile, consider uploading these VODs to YouTube because Twitch is the worst memory bank for esports games in the history of mankind. If you like this video and you had no idea that Risen even existed and you want to watch it, the Twitter for Risen and the Twitch for Risen are also linked below. If you liked what I said about any of the teams in this video, then the socials for those teams are also in the description below.